A portion of this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey, welcome back to the channel. And this is the Google Pixel 7, the non-pro version. And this is the phone that I think most people should buy if you're looking to upgrade to a Pixel 7 series phone. Whether you're coming from an older Pixel phone or maybe you're switching over from a different OEM, I really think that the Pixel 7 is smartphone of the year worthy. Let me tell you why. Okay, so first things first, if you haven't seen my review on the Pixel 7 Pro, I'll make sure to leave that linked in the description below. But basically I use the Pixel 7 Pro as my phone exclusively for three weeks and have been using this smaller Pixel 7 shortly after my review went up. And it's pretty much what I experienced last year when I switched from the 6 Pro to the Pixel 6. The smaller form factor is really nice and the flat 90 Hertz display is just beautiful. So let's talk specs real quick. The Pixel 7 is using the Google Tensor G2 processor, which basically improves on AI and machine learning, but also you know, improves on graphical performance and battery efficiency. Besides that, you're getting eight gigs of RAM and up to 256 gigs of storage. And I said this in my Pixel 7 Pro review, I wish there are more storage options here for the Pixel 7 series, but I guess Google is all in on cloud storage. Now up front, we also have a 6.3 inch 1080p OLED display that's now 25% brighter, up to 1400 nits, which just looks beautiful to look at. The colors are super vibrant and the 90 Hertz refresh rate, in my opinion, looks just as smooth as the 120 Hertz refresh rate on the Pixel 7 Pro. Okay, so now that we got some of the basic specs out of the way, the camera bar on the back, just like the 7 Pro, is made out of aluminum, which looks more premium than the glass camera bar from last year. And since this doesn't have a dedicated telephoto lens, you're only getting an ultra wide and the main wide camera. And we'll talk more about its camera capabilities later in the video. Now, what I love about the Pixel 7 is just how great it feels in the hand. The Pixel 6 felt good, but the Pixel 7 just feels a little bit nicer since it's actually a little bit smaller than the 6 from last year. And as someone who's been using the 7 Pro for you know the last three weeks, I love the smaller form factor on the 7, and I think that people will like this form factor a lot. The build quality is superb. The matte finish on the frame looks much nicer than the one on the Pro in my opinion. And I think it'll also show less scratches if you're not a case person. And also the weight distribution feels substantially better than last year's too. I also love that the side buttons have shifted down a little bit from where it feels more natural in my hand. I felt like the button placement last year was just a little too high and the seven this year, I didn't really need to adjust where my thumb would usually go if I needed to change the volume or lock the phone. Now the fingerprint reader on the Pixel 7 this year, in my opinion, is much faster and more reliable than last year's, but there's also face unlock, which isn't as secure as the one on the Pixel 4 XL, but will make unlocking your phone a lot quicker this time around. Now, when it comes to software, I cover this in my 7 Pro review already, but it's a very familiar experience if you've ever used a Pixel device. It's a very minimalistic approach to Android. There's really not a lot of customization options for the home screen and lock screen, but it is a very fast and fluid experience that I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy. I keep saying that over and over again, but it, it's true. Now, I think I've said this before in other videos talking about the Pixel, but Pixel phones are pretty much the iPhones of Android, and that's not a bad thing. With the Pixel 7 and Android 13, they've added some newer features like voice transcriptions in the Google Messages app via RCS, a cough and snore detection feature if you've got the bedtime mode set up in your digital well being settings, and you also get better voice typing support, which is always nice to have. But of course, there's also photo unblur and cinematic blur, which are two new camera features for the Pixel 7 series. So when it comes to performance, the Tensor G2 processor isn't meant to be a super fast, ultra performance processor. The Pixel 7 is still a fast phone, but it's all about having that balance of power and efficiency. Think of the processing power on the Tensor G2 having the same performance chops as the Snapdragon 888 processor, but with the you know power efficiency of the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor. But in this case, you're also getting powerful AI and machine learning on device. I played maybe 30 to 45 minutes of games on this phone, and one thing I did notice is that not once did a game crash, nor did it stutter or you know show noticeable lag when gaming. I'm not gonna say it's the best gaming performance that I've had on a phone, but for a phone that's not about having the best performance, it's pretty impressive to be able to play games for a good amount of time and you know not have the phone get super hot or crash on you. And the battery efficiency on the Pixel 7 is 
pretty good that I was able to use the phone from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. with about 10% battery left before heading to bed. I will admit that charging on the Pixel 7 is pretty slow, so that's one area I'm hoping Google can improve on for future Pixel phones. Now, before I talk about the cameras on the Pixel 7, I do just wanna quickly thank my friends at Squarespace who sponsored a portion of this video. Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for the last few months, you guys know that I designed my website in literally an hour, thanks to Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to present your work or portfolio online. I partnered up with Squarespace after years of using their service so that I can have a premium looking website where people can see some of the work that I've done in the past, but it's also a way for brands or clients to reach out and work with me. Now what's cool about Squarespace is that you can build a website from scratch or use Squarespace's amazing selection of templates. They have a ton that you can choose from, whether you want your website mainly for, you know, for photography or maybe you want to set up an online store or maybe a tech blog. Designing your website is super easy and you don't need to know how to code, which is probably the best part about using Squarespace. But what I really like the most about Squarespace is that once you have your website all built out, it'll automatically resize your website to be more mobile friendly so that you don't have to do all the hard work optimizing for both desktop, mobile, and tablets. We're on our phones more and more, so having my website automatically optimized for mobile is a great feature and one that I really appreciate. If you've been wanting to build your dream website, make sure to check out the first link down below and check out Squarespace. You can get a free trial and 10% off by using the first link in the description or go to Squarespace squarespace.com slash Markel. Again, special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, now let's talk about the cameras. Now, what I really like about the Pixel 7 this year is that Google didn't really mess with a lot of things on the Pixel 7 series. They knew that the Pixel 6 had a great camera system and how can they improve it? First, they use the Tensor G2 processor to add a few new software features like Photo Unblur, which will help you take any photo with the magic of AI and machine learning and can turn those blurry photos into sharper looking images. Now, not all photos are gonna look great, but it is nice that you don't need to use the Pixel 7 camera to use this feature. You can literally load up almost any blurry photo to your Pixel 7 and just hit the photo and blur feature and a few seconds later, it'll process and give you a better looking image. The other new feature is cinematic blur, which is Google's take on cinematic mode. The results are flattering bokeh with a solid separation between your subject and the background, but it is capped at 1080p at 24 frames per second, whereas Apple with the iPhone 14 series can film in 4K or 1080p at 24 or 30 frames per second, but also have the ability to control the amount of blur and adjust the focus points before or after shooting. But for a first generation release, the cinematic blur on the Pixel 7 is pretty solid. So I'm hoping that they can add 4K and the ability to you know, adjust the intensity of the blur with aperture control and maybe adding options to adjust the focus points after shooting the clips. But we'll have to maybe wait another year and see if they do improve this. And yeah, besides those two new features, the camera system on the Pixel 7 is pretty much unchanged from the Pixel 6. It's still using the same 50 megapixel camera and the same 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Although I wish that the 7 featured the newer wider ultra wide camera with autofocus for macro photography, but the only new camera sensor on the Pixel 7 really is the front facing camera, which is now a 10.8 megapixel. And it's also much wider with bigger pixels. Now, even though Google didn't change the camera hardware on the Pixel 7, the ISP on the Tensor G2 processor is gonna help process these photos faster, but also give you better looking shots than before. So that means how it processes your photo's colors, the sharpness, and you know the white balance in each photo are gonna look more accurate than before. Now, another thing that the Tensor G2 enables is 4K60 video recording on both the main wide camera and ultra wide, and the front facing camera, which the Pixel 6 couldn't do last year. Overall, the camera upgrades are minor on the 7, but the way it shoots and how the final images look are great, and having that 2x digital zoom lens without it looking like a potato is a really nice touch. But yeah, that's the Pixel 7 in a nutshell. I think the Pixel 7 is the best Android phone that you can buy at the moment. With a starting price of $599, you can't really beat that. The cameras, the build quality, the software, and how stable it's been for me over the last month that I've had the phone just shows that Google's really refining what they did with the Pixel 6 and trying to perfect it. Personally, I've never had any modem issues or the phone overheating when, you know, gaming, but who knows how this phone will perform six months from now. But a month in with both the 7 and the 7 Pro, I think Google's doing something right here.